Here we are at the Strathroy Antique Mall, and what we have here is American Beauty teapot. At the end, I will be taking a picture of all the sides. It's a very desirable pattern with the roses, and it's made by Royal Albert. So I've been asked, what exactly, when did Royal Albert begin? Well, in 1896, Thomas Clark Wilde bought a pottery place in Longden Sto Stroke on Trent. Here we are at Strathroy Antique Mall, and what we have here is a Royal Albert teapot. It's the American Beauty, a very desirable pattern, and Royal Albert too is very desirable, fine bone china. The roses is what makes the pattern so nice. The more pieces you get, the more beautiful it looks. Later on, I will be taking a picture of all the sides of this teapot as I will be selling it on eBay. I've been asked to put some of our pieces from the antique mall on eBay to offer it to everybody. So I'll be including the shipping and it'll be there for the whole world to purchase. You can also pick it up if you choose. I've been asked what is Royal Alberts? Where did they begin? Well, they've been around over a hundred years. In 1896, Thomas Clark Wilde bought a pottery company in Longton, Stoke on Trent, England. He called it Albert Works, which has been named the year before in honor of the birth of Prince Albert. Prince Albert became George V1 in 1936. So that's why you see a lot of Albert Crown China in the commemorative years. Using the brand name Albert Crown China, Thomas Wilde and Company produced commemorative bone china pieces for Queen Victoria's 1897 Diamond Jubilee. And by 1904, it had earned a royal warrant. From the beginning, Royal Albert's fine bone china was popular, especially the dinnerware. It was known for its original floral patterns and they were made a lot of times in rich reds, greens, and blues. They have incredibly white, white to them, pure bone china. Royal Albert was given to the sentimental and florid excesses of Victorian era England, making pattern after in pattern inspired by English gardens and woodlands. When you look at a lot of Royal Albert pieces, it is like that, gardens or outdoor scenes. They had many designs like C, C, was it C, uh, S E R E N A. You know the one. It's black and white. It's very popular, hard to find. Old English roses, that's one of our best sellers. Masquerade and moth, it's inspired by Japanese Amari. The company appealed to a wide range of tastes, from the simplest to the most aristocratic. Before 1904, pieces of wild bone china were printed or impressed on the back with the simple crown marks with the letters TCW underneath. So that is the earlier pieces. And then right after, around 1905 to 7, pieces were stamped with the words Royal Albert Crown China. And it also was marked like with circles around a crown and sometimes the letter still TCW or the pattern's name. Between 1907 and 1923, the new back stamp had a similar circular logo, but with the crown on top and interlocking TCW letters on the inside. So this really gives us an idea of the age of the pieces. I'll be showing the bottom of this piece at the end. In 1910, the company created its first overseas agency in New Zealand. Soon it had offices in Australia, Canada, and United States. Willing to experiment with the latest in industrial technologies, the company was an early a dominator of kilns fueled by gas and electricity. So they started the kilns. When Wilde's son joined the company in 1917, they quite naturally changed the firm names to Thomas Wilde and Sons and started using a mark that doesn't have circles around the logo. So that's that era. 
Then starting in 1927, Royal Albert used a wide variety of more stylized box stamps, some with the crown, some without. Others were um, script or stylized. Some were Art Deco lettering. You'll see many different types of signatures. Some of the marks even had roses or other parts of the pattern in them, as in this teapot. Patterns from the years between the wars included this one, the American Beauty. There was May Time, the Indian Trees Well Known, Dolly Varden, and Lady Gay. The 40s saw more patterns like Fragrance, Teddy's Playtime, Violets, uh, Love Violets, or Violets for Love, Princess Anne, Sunflower, White Dogwood, everybody seems to know, Mikado, Minuet, Cotswold, and the popular Lady Carl. Despite its relatively modern of the Royal Albert's most treasured pattern is probably Old Country Rose, which was introduced in 1962. It was designed by Harold Holdcraft, and this tremendously popular pattern, which has sold more than 150 million pieces, embodied English transitions like gardens and tea time. The design, as everybody knows, is red, pink, and yellow. There are English roses in full bloom. They're just gorgeous. They have the right touch of greenery and a 22 karat gold trim like this. Later variations of Old Country Rose include the blue and gray, Moonlight Rose, and the red and orange Pacific Rose. Ro um, the Royal Albert Old Country Rose is our best seller, probably always will be. In 2002, Royal Dalton moved the production of Royal Albert from England to in Indonesia thus making all plates marked made in England, much more valuable to collectors. Now that's what everybody here looks for because they don't really want the Indonesia pieces. A few years later, Waterford Wedgwood absorbed Royal Dalton Group and all of its stuff and currently makes three brands. They make Royal Dalton, Minton, Royal Albert, including the old country rose pattern. So if you're looking for old vintage patterns, like especially with the old country rose. Remember, they started in 62. Check the box stamps. All this corporate upheaval, however, did not diminish the value of Royal Albert to the throne. In 2002, the company launched small lines to com commemorative the Golden Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II and the death of Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. In addition, fashion designer Zandra Rhodes was hired in 2005 to create a pattern for the Royal Dalton called My Favorite Things. These luxury dinnerware sets are trimmed in mica. They have butterflies and wiggle moffets and they're inspired by the Rhodes fabric. So it's still a very desirable company, Royal Dalton, but you just have to check up your pieces. I'm going to go over this one and show you all sides of it because this is on auction. It's in very good condition as you can see. There is no cracks or chips. There is wear to the gold from use. As you can see, I'm going to show you all, like, see the end of the teapot and probably some other areas. It's very light wear. Tea tastes better in these teapots. And they really do. We have a tea shop that buys from us in London, Ontario. And she buys all these old bone china pieces. None of the newer ones. And her tea drinkers just love it. She's went to school. She's learned about it. And it's a definite. So she'll come through, buy up all our teapots. If you go there, it's downtown London. She's just started a shop. It's been there a year. Her and her partner. I wish I remembered the name, but I don't. It's uptown off of Richmond, behind the Wendy's of Oxford, Oxford and Richmond. So here's the lid. No cracks or chips. Inside there is a few dots from where, just black dark marks. It's a clean pot. This can be yours. I'm doing it as a buy it now. Just if you like it, just buy it. 
It'll get shipped out. It'll be packed very nicely. Done in bubble wrap and chips. It will not be broken when it gets there. And that's just the gold overlay. Or you can pick it up at 39 Front Street. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And good luck.